All right, well, this is basically going to be a small, well, might turn out to be a large series about cutting the cord. Recently, Comcast decided to encrypt their basic channels or whatever, because um, I have Comcast from my internet, and I was just screwing in the little um, coaxial cable into my TV, and I was getting, you know, local HD channels, you know, Fox, ABC, and all that sort of thing. So I go, oh, that's great, you know. Um, and then they offered me HBO for five dollars a month with my if I upgraded my speed on the internet. So I did that. Um, and then they encrypted um, the signals. And I had an SD box that I got when I signed up for HBO. Um, and I plugged it in and realized it's standard definition only. Um, and I don't want to watch stuff in standard definition. That's kind of pointless. So I have Netflix. I have you know I have a ton of things that that all stream in HD. I'm, I don't do SD anymore. Sorry, that's just the way it is. I mean, if I have to, I guess I did. But so I called them up and I said, you know, I need I need an HD box. You know, I can pay or I can get a cable card, or whatever you need me to do. And they're like, well, you have to pay ten dollars a month to even get the the HD signal. And I was like, ten dollars a month just to send me HD signal, and then an additional however much to rent the HD box. And I was like, really? I was getting free HD from you guys just to screw it into the back of the TV. There's no way I'm paying extra, so I went out and got an antenna. Um, and when my HBO trial expires, I'll probably just get rid of Comcast entirely. Um, so if you're thinking about cutting the cord, I want to give you what uh, I've been doing to uh, to get around that whole paying tons of money for it. Um, so the first thing you're going to want to do is go to TV Fool, and you're going to want to take a look at type in your address and take a look at what channels you could possibly get um, and I would recommend doing a form search maybe or you know, just Google searching to see what channels people usually get because CBS is on this list um, but we can't pick that up and doing some searches shows that like no one apparently can pick that up for some reason so um, so go out and uh, take a look at things and maybe talk to someone about what antenna to get um, as you can see, we Fox, IND, PBS, NBC, ABC, IND again, CBS and ABC were all kind of channels, and these two channels as well, were all channels we we potentially should be able to get with a good antenna. So an indoor, as it says green, an indoor set top antenna is probably sufficient to pick up these channels. So the TV Fool is pretty good at it. Um, so I went and looked out, uh, looked to see, you know, what a set-top antenna was, and I found one of the most popular ones, Mahu uh, Leaf Paper Thin Indoor HD TV Antenna. It's supposed to be fairly good. Um, so I picked it up, and I mounted it um, in our living room, like above the TV, pretty much at the ceiling. And uh, you, what I recommend doing is getting like a sticky... Um, like the command hooks or whatever, there's like a they come with like a sticky back and get a sticky back in or something that you can throw on the back of this antenna because it is paper thin, like it says. Um, and throw it on the back of the antenna. There's a black and white side, whatever side you want visible. Throw it on the other side and slam it onto the wall. Kind of stick it there and then just sit there and back away so that you're not interfering with what signals you usually get. And um, and kind of flip through the channels or scan for channels and see what you get and then move it around and try and get as much as you can. Um, after doing a bunch of that same uh, contortions, I did get almost all of these channels. As I said, CBS, the pretty much the only way I would get it is if I ran a cable over the wall and literally stuck this probably on the actual window outside, uh, which I, you know, um, the window to the outside, I should say. This is an indoor antenna, not for outside directly. Because um, when I did walk over near the window, I was starting to barely pick up CBS. Um, the problem is, um, where I stuck it, for some reason, it can only get PBS or Fox, one of the two. Um, if, if if I get both, they come in kind of crappy. And with HD signals, it, it breaks down very quickly. Um, you'll get lines, and then you'll get, you know, you, the whole thing just falls apart. So, so essentially, what I did is I decided, well, PBS don't really need, so I stuck it higher to the ceiling. And got Fox. Yeah, I guess if I had a lot of time, I could, you know, go ahead and stick it because even moving it an inch seems to really change it. So, that's something you want to look at. Um, after you pick up the antenna, if you just want to watch TV on one, you know, one TV, you're good to go. You know, obviously that's an antenna, etc. But people want like the DVR options and stuff like that. So. 
Um, fortunately, when I bought the house, it was wired entirely through the coax. There was coax in pretty much every single room. Some rooms, two coax cables running into them. Um, and I'd use that, obviously, for the OTA Comcast. Um, and, you know, if they haven't encrypted your... your if you're using the over-the-air Comcast um, TV channels, they will encrypt that. And then when you go to uh, turn on your TV, you'll just get a nice little Comcast message saying, you're going to have to get screwed by us and pay money to watch those shows now. And so, yeah. Um, so, the next thing I went and bought was... Um, uh, Halpage 1187 Halpage Halpage. Um, this is basically just a TV tuner for a PC. Um, that's where you put in the antenna, and that's pretty much all I use it for. Um, I don't need in the audio or anything like that. So, um, and this is just a single-headed tuner. You can get dual-headed tuners to watch and record at the same time, and you know other little things you can do if you wanted to watch and record on the actual box so it's usually never an issue we can watch on an actual TV and just record on this but also if you want to record more than one show at a time so but um, this was yeah I just bought it for $55 um, you, you can pick some things up at like Best Buy um, but I think they just have the USB ones and you're gonna want to make sure this is supported um, because if you're going to do a DVR, you're probably going to get a want to get a server. And the one I chose was TV Head End, um, and you can choose Myth TV as well. That one looks way more complicated, and it just man, they just did not go <laughs> go through a lot of steps to make that easy. That is just really hard to set up, from what I can tell. So um, at least if you want a web interface and all that. So what I got is TV Head End. It's in the Debian repositories. So you get to uh, install it just from uh, Aptitude or Aptget. So, um, so once we have once you once you have all that figured out and tested, you know, test make sure it works. Then you can run the cables and you know buy splitters, buy coax cords, whatever you need, and run it to you know your basement wherever you have your server. And basically, I just have a Linux box, nothing special. Um, I do have Proxmox installed on it, which is a virtualization. Um, uh, set up so this next part is going to apply literally just to um, people running Proxmox but I figured we should go ahead and run through that so what you're going to want to do to if you're going to run this on a virtual machine which I plan on doing and let's take a look at the virtual machine it's actually going to be running on media right here um, which doesn't require a whole lot of resources really I have one processor, two gigs of memory, two gigs swap, just at 45 gigabytes, although I'm saving them to uh, NAS drive anyway, so, um, especially if the processing is done on card, so, so pretty much, if we want to run it on this OpenVZ container in Proxmox, so we're going to have to pass through the DVB card to the actual um, container, so, Let's go ahead and take a look on that. So this is my Proxmox host right here. So um, the first thing you're going to want to do is um, after you install the card is LSPCI, and that's going to go ahead and show uh, all of your PCI cards. And it probably won't look anything like you know it won't say what you bought you know Hana page or whatever. But you will see multimedia video controller or something like that. It should say exactly that pretty much if you're using Debian. Um, uh, Connexent system CX2332885 PCI Vision Audio Coder. Um, and that's it. That means it's installed on your Proxmox server, and you now need to pass it through to your container. And my media container is uh, 104, so we need to keep that in mind. So, first, uh, first thing we need to do is go to your device folder, and then you should have a DVB folder. Um, and that's just for any DVB devices. If we do an LS, there's just adapter zero. And then you're going to go to a. Oh. Okay, we're going to see it in there. And then we're going to do a LSLA, and we'll see four things DMUX, DVR, front end, and uh, net zero. So we're going to remember those things, and then we're going to go to our uh, VZ configuration, etc. VZ. And we're going to do nano104.conf. And there we go. 
Um, you can see I added dev nodes for each one. Dev nodes, dbb, adapter 0, dmux 0, read write, read write for all of those. And that's pretty much, that's it. I mean, now you'll be able to go in and if we go into, this is my media container right here. Um, TV head end is available into in the repositories. Um, there is, if it's not, um, if you're not running Debian or for some reason it's not, there's a repository you can add. So if we do aptitude search TV head end, should pull up there. Yep. Um, and I went ahead and installed that, and it was very simple. Uh, I think there was like a little install script where you just answered a few questions, basic questions, and um, then there you go. You it's installed, and you can do service TV head and start, or I think it starts automatically after it's done. But um, and as you can see, the commands above there, the netstat apn grep 9981 that can make sure it's running, uh, and 9981 is the port that it binds to. By default, um, it's the web server port. And to access that, you just need to pop over to um, that IP address 9981, and you should be pretty much good to go. Um, now let's go. You know, it'll come to this page right here, and I like to pop this up as well because this has a nice little debug system log in case something goes wrong. Go to configuration, DVB inputs, TV adapters, and then it, there won't be anything there, but you should be able to click on the list and then select your TV adapter, and it's going to pop up this page right here. Um, and usually I don't think there's really anything I had to change. Sometimes skip initial scan is checked, and you'll want to uncheck that because it does need to do an initial scan. You're going to want to save it, and then you're going to want to add DVB network by location. And now for since we're doing an over-the-air antenna one, we're going to do US ATSC center frequencies AVSB. Um, ATSC means over the air. The other ones, if you have like a cable, um, if you have like an unencrypted cable or a QAM encrypted, I believe, cable, you can use those. But I don't know much about that, so you have to do that. So then you have to add DVB network. Um, and then it's going to go through its scan. Um, it'll add all the muxes here, and then this once you do the initial scan, it'll be like 69 muxes here, and it'll slowly drop down um, until it's zero. Um, and you can see it in here. This uh, it'll show all the signal strength for all of them when you first do the scan, and this doesn't refresh automatically. You have to like manually refresh this part of at least the this number will refresh automatically. Um, and after it does a scan on the max multiplexes, it'll put it in services. That's where I ran into my first problem. Um, it did not come up with a service name or anything else about it. So. That means usually, because usually what you do is you'd have all these services here. Then you go back to general, and this should have been uh, grayed out when you first did it. But after you do your scan, and you have services. You can do map DVB services to channels, and that's how you get your, your channels. You know, fancy, fancy. However, with no service name, apparently no channels. So um, I looked it up, and I've seen. The few people saying it's a bug. I didn't see it from my exact version saying it's a bug, and some of the bug reports were for older versions. Um, but I could not find anyone that knew how to fix that. Maybe I'll post on the forums, or maybe it's just not fixable. I don't know. Um, so what I was forced to do essentially was to play these all back and um, figure out which channel was which. Fortunately you can play all these, you can hit play in the web interface, it doesn't work for me, they say my permissions there, but it doesn't matter, I'm not too concerned about it. Um, what I'm doing to test it is going to VLC player and then saying copy this link address and then open network stream and then pasting that link address directly in there. It's going to ask you for a username and password. And sometimes this will take forever to load, and I don't know if it loads after you actually convert it to a channel. Um, in fact, let's actually make sure it is working. Um, and so you have these, and then next you're going to need to get actual convert these all to TV channels, whether it's automated uh, by MapDVD services or if you manually do it, which is what we will cover next. Alright, now that you have all these services here um, and manually mapping them, um, you can manually map them easier using Titan TV, create an account, do OTA, and then it'll show you like, you know, 17.1, 17.2, and you can pretty much just copy and paste it into here. Um, after you play it in VLC to make sure that it's the actual one, um, 
and to plate and view C again just copy link address open VLC and then media open network stream paste and then hit play and it sometimes it takes a little while to load um, especially and it won't load at all if it actually isn't getting enough signal um, so you want to make sure go upstairs slip on your TV you know make sure you're definitely still working um, any complaint here? I can't play anything right now to show you since I'm testing the recording uh, right now and you can't, since I have just a single head, I can't record and stream at the same time, so record and watch at the same time, I should say, so um, so essentially I just copied and pasted this from Titan TV after watching them and then it seems to map it automatically um, but if not you can hit map selected and then go into the channel EPG and every time you save it, it seems like to me every time you save it or change it in here, change and save it, it'll add another separate channel, so make sure you're not creating a bunch of duplicate channels in here. Um, and of course, you're ready to go, you can uh, copy and play that again into VLC, and it'll work just the same, and it'll stream just fine. So, that's pretty much it um, for, for the community channels. Um, the grab source will be empty at, the, at this time, I'll show you how to get that up and running. Um, that is a chore, it's actually rather difficult. Um, but as long as you have these channels, you can, if you want to set it up in XBMC, you can set that up. I'll be doing a little tutorial on that um, shortly.